And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Dear friends, we have a special opportunity today, a very special one, of getting closer to the Lord and receiving everything that He has prepared for us. We already know that God does wonders. This is something unquestionable. Because he promised it. Jesus said, one day some people came to him and said, Lord, get away from here because Herod wants to kill you, Lord. Have you thought of God running away? <laughs> so go and tell that fox that today and tomorrow I will rebuke demons and make healings. And in the third day I will finish this. Today is the day of his ministry. Tomorrow means our days or what he is working through our lives. And after he comes again, the operation of miracles will cease. But run away. Never. And when the Son of God, we should never run away, we but always stand firm in what God is telling us. The enemy is a deceiver. He really does what he can. He tries to do us harm. But if we stand firm in the Word of God, we are going to win in the name of Jesus. And today is a day of victory. You can write this down for the glory of the Lord God. We're going to study a passage now in the first book of Samuel, chapter 26. And this is going to help us a lot because this will be an answer. Um, it is a declaration that King David made when Saul was after him, ready to get him and didn't manage to do so. And David then um, was much blessed and he, he could have destroyed Saul, but he was a godly man. So he didn't touch the Lord's anointed. He let God do his work someday. Let God do his work someday, whatever he desires to do. My dear friends, in the first book of Samuel chapter 26 and in verse 23, King David said the following, when he was escaping from Saul and Saul entered, he entered exactly in the same cave where David was and he could have killed Saul right there. It is written the following, may the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I would not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. In this passage, he is addressing Saul. David could have killed him because Saul was there, and he could have simply finished with Saul. And twice he could have done this in the cave. And then later when Saul was sleeping with a spear beside him, and David got the spear. So then he said to Saul the following, summarizing what happened, May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. I want to emphasize today so that you may study. When you are faithful towards God, you are not unfaithful. The Lord spoke to your heart, you understood, and you are fulfilling it, doing what is righteous as he ordered. Because every single act that we do according to the revelation of God is an act of righteousness. In that moment, we stop the enemy's action. Right there, we bring into action so the Lord is going to repay. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. If you have done something that the Lord ordered, dear brethren, do not have the slightest, not the slightest doubt, you will certainly receive the reward from the Lord. Even if you do not do it seeking for self-interest, it wasn't you who wanted to do it. No, God touched you, so you did it. And the work was fulfilled, the work was effective. In this situation, God tested David by putting him right beside Saul. It would be so easy, he only had to get his spear and finish off with the man. But he didn't do this. Then he said, may the Lord repay every man for his righteousness. He was loyal to Saul because he was the king, the Lord's anointed. He was in a position that was superior to him, although he had been chosen to be the new king. But David waited for God to fulfill his work and the Lord would repay the act of righteousness. What is the act of righteousness? It was when he decided to obey when God touched him. Be careful, Saul is the Lord's anointed. So then he obeyed it and then God blessed him. Let me bless your life now. Father, may not even one person in this place from this moment on allow the human impulse or the even the enemies to take over his heart, but may they follow your touch as David felt it. And David was loyal to Saul because he was the king. He was in a superior position. And he also practiced your word and practiced righteousness. And the Lord repaid him according to the things that he had done. I'm going to bless this person that is suffering a lot now. And this is for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all evil and I order, leave. Do not stay any longer in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen. 
Dear friends, Jeremiah chapter 23, starting on verse 5. Here the Lord's prophet was used in the following manner. It says the following, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. This passage is talking about the Lord Jesus, a descendant of David that came in order all the things that had to be done. And the passage that we read is saying this, that the king, he shall reign. What does this mean for us? In the passage of Revelation 5.10 says that Jesus himself has made us kings to live for our God, kings and priests of God. But have we really reigned with him? Have we really taken this seriously? Have we sought power from the Lord? Have we truly believed in the Lord? And have we determined things as he says in his word? If we have not done so, we are losing out. Behold, I will raise. Um, behold, the days are coming. These are our days, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness, a man that would practice the word of God. I have been called to do my own will. No, you have been called to do your own will. No, we have been called to do the entire will of the Lord God. And he said, a king shall reign and prosper. Therefore, when we are kings, we are supposed to reign, to be sovereign. We must have the last word. And if we reign, we are going to prosper. We are going to understand more. God is going to do more for us. We are going to have more power. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, it is written here, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Our families must be saved. This must be really accepted in your heart. When I was, when I was a child, as I discovered the word of God, uh, Acts 16.31, I even get amazed when I remember all of this. Believe in the Lord and Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. My brethren, I believed right then. I was in my childhood, didn't understand a lot. When I prayed, I used to say, Jesus, I believed. Bring daddy now, bring mommy, bring Agilson, Umberto, Ira, Ronaldo, who are my siblings. And none of this failed. They all came to God. My father and mother are already there. And in a while we will depart because this is the way of every man. <laughs> but we are going to the house of the eternal father. What about you and your family? Where is your father and your mother? Where are your brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters-in-law, sons and daughters-in-law, grandsons and granddaughters? You must do something. Be positioned in your life. As a king, you must always reign. But it's not to reign. Only if possible, you must prosper. Your word must fulfill the things that you determine. And besides prospering, you must execute judgment and righteousness. Judgment is what God has already done. Salvation has already been provided for all. In the moment when I accepted Jesus, this is what I understood. God took the robes of salvation and extended them over my family. Therefore, it was up to me to pray so that they could enter and all of them entered. It is the same thing with you. And this shouldn't stop. This must be something to be brought to prayer, to seek the Lord. A king shall reign. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment. It is written here and righteousness in the earth. Every single word that God speaks into your heart and that you feel that is a promise, you are supposed to execute this righteousness. If you stop to pray, to practice and to send evil away, will it work? It will. Next verse, because after this, I'm going to read numbers. This is what is written. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called. What is the name in which we will call the Lord Jesus? Jesus, I now. But what does this mean for us? The Lord is our righteousness. When you determine something that you have learned in the word of God, in the name of Jesus, you can say this, the Lord is my righteousness and he will fulfill his work. There is a very sad story. There is in the book of Numbers chapter 25, in which Israel, before in the previous chapters, the, the, the king of Moabites ordered to pay a salary to a prophet of the Lord. That man was a mercenary in order to go and curse the people of Israel. It was the man that rode a donkey and the donkey spoke to him. This is Balaam. Very well. This same man was prohibited by God to curse Israel. He said, I can't do this. 
There's no way against, uh, against um, uh, Jacob. No curse will stand. But this man was evil. On his way out with money in his pocket, he said the following to Balak, I'm going to tell you a secret. You may use the Moabite women who are immoral to seduce the Israelite men and they will fall in this. Then he whiffed. Nobody heard this, but God hears all things. And he had the reward for his work after this. And the Moabite women came and seduced. In the past, the cult to other gods, most of them were like orgies. They were really, really dirty kind of cults. And by what we read here, what they most seduced were acts contrary to nature itself. This is so serious, and it was very shameful. Then, let us read Numbers chapter 25, because this will help many people. There are some lunatics out there saying that these things are permissible, and they are not. Those who do them will have problems. What happened in this story is a lesson of what will happen spiritually to a person. Chapter 25, Book of Numbers. I am going to read it from the same version I have read so far. I Now Israel remained in the Sasia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the woman of Moab. They began, but it got worse. Sin starts only with a small case. Suddenly, there is no way out of it. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, to the cults that they did to them. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods and their practices. And these gods remain here still today, folks, with a lot of open propaganda leading many people towards destruction. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. The cult to Baal of Peor spread really quickly. Baal, in their language, means Lord. Jehovah, in the Hebrew language, is Lord. So Baal, the cult to Baal was like this. If a person had done something that was wrong, how would he cleanse himself? He would get a woman, go under a tree, and then you know what happened. Then he thought that he was forgiven. Then most of the sinners would do that. Have you ever thought if I said this from the pulpit, it is liberated? Oh, Dr. Suarez, you've liberated it. People don't have proper judgment. Those who belong to God will say, no, this man is crazy. It was easy for this cult to spread. And under those trees, they did what they shouldn't do. But God was watching all that they did. The competition with Jehovah was great because God, Jehovah is a God of holiness and Baal is a God of prostitution. Then the Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord. Out in the sun, really serious. That the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, Every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. This is what is going to happen on Judgment Day. It is a very strong explanation, but this is how it should have happened. Now look how serious this was. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. When he say that God was doing that cleansing and ordered Moses to kill, this man defied everyone and came. And everyone was weeping there. Then he entered into his tent. Now when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. You already understood what was going on, right? The two of them were together. He thrust the spear in her. It went out of him and struck the land. An act that was contrary to nature, not only of prostitution. This is really serious. Dear brethren, make your life be holy or you are going to pay in a cruel way. God is bringing you a message here. The couple must be united, nature with nature. 
Not the contrary. Uh, 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 uh. This is what Phineas did. What happened then to Phineas? That God touched him in order to be an example for us. And those who died in the, in the plague were 24,000. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them. Everyone was going to be consumed. Therefore, say, behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. Dear brethren, this is really serious. When you see something that is wrong, especially in the house of the Lord, and the person does not get things right, if God touches your heart, you are not going to get a spear, but you are going to get the name of Jesus, who is our righteousness, and you're going to make a prayer. Then that plague will cease and you will be rewarded for that. David said that he was rewarded for his faithfulness and the righteousness he practiced. God is going to reward us. And what God said about Phinehas many years later, God said something serious concerning Phinehas. It's on Psalm 106 verses 30 and 31. God did not forget this. Years went by and then the author of Psalm 106 used by the Holy Spirit of God, spoke on verses 30 and 31. Then Phinehas stood up and intervened, and the plague was stopped. And that was accounted to him for righteousness to all generations forevermore. It is not only in the case of prohibiting and intervening with your prayer that there might not be a scandal in the midst of God's people, but whatever may be God's touch in your life, if you feel that someone is not well, and nowadays we need to save lives and not commit an act to kill, you enter before the presence of God and pray, intercede and conquer the blessing for that person. He asked for blessing, you offered to pray. Listen, I noticed that you aren't well. Do you want me to pray for you? I do. Right in that moment, in the moment when you pray, you are doing an act of righteousness, that will be properly rewarded by the Lord, and your reward will be with you forever. The years went by, and his priesthood was blessed perpetually. Why is that? Because he honored the Lord's touch. He was faithful to the Lord God. He was obedient. He took his, uh, his decision before everyone else to go there and do that so that God would not consume everyone else. Always be someone that is in the gap for others, but be careful with your own righteousness. Be careful not to do only what you want. Follow the Lord's orientation. John 6, 63. I've spoken about this a while ago, but I said without reading it to you, Jesus here is speaking. The Lord Jesus says the following. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Everything that comes from someone's own initiative in the heart of someone, don't do it. John 6.63 The flesh profits nothing, but whatever you feel from the word that must be accomplished gives profit and life. You enter before the Lord saying, God, I'm here for you today, fulfilling the touch of your spirit. And I am going now to paralyze the work of the devil, whatever it may be like, even if everyone may have the same decision, even if your authority said, it is going to be this way from now on. No, it won't be so, Mr. Authority, because in the name of Jesus, I take away the authority from your word. Then that situation changes completely. God is looking for faithful people, people that obey, people that receive the ministry and do not go to arms. No, I am going to do this because the Lord has ordered me to do so and he is going to reward you in the name of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for the word that clarifies our minds, that strengthens us, that enlightens. And God, may we never act on our own account, by our own initiative. And may we not do anything to show off, but may every single one of our attitudes, and we know when the Lord speaks to us, because we are in peace. We are in holiness, and you speak to us with love. 
then God, we will paralyze the works of the enemy and the victory will belong to your people. Thank you for the people that serve you with faithfulness, practicing righteousness, for they will be rewarded. And as a minister of your work, now, Father, I address this problem right now that this person has. And I say now, demon, get everything that is yours, your pain, your infirmity, your physical deficiency, your moral deficiency that you put in this person, this scandalous work, and I order you now, leave now. I am paralyzing it. Father, like Phineas's spear, I destroy this evil work in the life of this person and I bring freedom to this person now. Be set free in the name of the Jesus Christ. And you say, thank you, Jesus, and amen. Let's now go to the real life drama, shall we? Alan knows the Word of God. However, he walks away from the ways of the Lord and becomes addicted to gambling. I enjoyed games a lot, every single kind of game, and something went on in my mind that erased what I knew about the Word of God, and this started to fall apart, you know? In that period, the problems really started. It's your addiction. It's the game, I would say. This is what's leading you from bad to worse. And my debts reached almost 42,000 reais, right? I didn't know what to do. I would work, but the money that I received, I wasn't, I wasn't able to get it. When it came, the bank would get it because I used all the card limits. So because of that, we lacked things at home. We were practically at the bottom of the pit because our debts were only increasing and increasing. My daughters sometimes asked me for things, but we couldn't give anything, right? It came to the point where I even thought of divorce. I would leave to work and sometimes didn't have the willingness to come back home because of the discussions, the arguments, and the debts that we had. Eunice, however, is a servant of God and assumes the calling to support the work of the Lord. I said, Lord, you are faithful with me. I must be faithful with you. Sponsorship's a calling. I said, I'm going to put it in my husband's name. Then I put down Eunice slash husband. It was after that that God started to look for my faithfulness. Even if I got home and it seemed like things were worse, I would continue firm. And I would always say, Lord, I'm going to see my husband beside me. I am going to see him doing the Lord's work with me. It doesn't matter what people say. It is you and your house. He will do God's work with me. They were not living an abundant life. They had their financial life in ruins. Their emotional life was destroyed. I started to support this couple spiritually. And when I would get to their house, I would share the word with them and I would make a prayer. Then the word of God started to bring change in the life of Alan. I got the Bible one day and started to read it at home. And I went back to the church. And God blessed us. He started to give tithes at first slowly, attending service, giving an offering, being a giver. God started to, to show me what I, what I was supposed to do. I should obey the word of God, be obedient, right? Then things started to change. There was some money I had to receive, but I thought that I wouldn't receive anymore. I uh, considered it a, a lost money. The person then paid me and gave me more money that I didn't even imagine. Today, I have managed to negotiate my debts, which were more than 42,000. In the bank only, it was 19,000 and something. I managed to pay it off with 2,600. It was a huge blessing, you know, that I was amazed, right? And another debt that was 22,000, I managed to pay it off with 8,000 reais. Besides having their financial and marital lives restored, Alan also receives deliverance from the addiction to gambling. When I saw that I would really have to make a decision to stop with games was when I received the invitation to, to do the work really. It was when God spoke really strong with me and I, I even... It was really difficult because I had to go down and deny my own self and give myself completely to Jesus Christ. God changed everything. He is restored. He is well structured. He has already said this to me. You know what? I am going to do God's work. He said it and he did it. And for me, it was a great joy. This is the truth. 
as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. With all our sincerity, we will seek Him and we don't want to ever leave this path. This is so beautiful, folks. <laughs> Let us now truly open up our hearts, shall we? Dr. Suarez, I lost someone that I loved. My pastor said that I should go on with my life to meet another person because it's not good to live alone. But this is not what I want to listen. I want to be freed from this feeling that seems to corrode this pain that burns from how much I miss him. I need to get home and have peace and not be sorrowful with the memories of everything that we live together. Dr. Swadis, how is this possible? Can I listen to the Holy Spirit and receive help from him? I need spiritual understanding. God speaks through his word. In my ministry, there was a time that I got really saddened with the situation. And from one moment to another, there was a multitude I'm talking about many years ago. And then there was no one left. But, but one day that was making me sad. I came from praying at night at the beach. When I got home in front of the door, when I opened it, I said, God, I knelt down. You were going to work this miracle. Take it all away from me as, as if it had never existed because I have to work to fulfill. In the following day, I don't remember anything. For me to remember even a message that I gave at that time, I need to force my mind a lot. I forgot completely. If you pray with certainty, God changes because you must live. The pasture is right. Someone has left you. But life continues. Marriage, for example. Marriage lasts until death. Death separates a couple. You don't have, if you marry again, you are not betraying anyone because marriage is ended with death. If you wish to remarry, may it be in the Lord. Let us pray now. Father, we are praying now in favor of the people who are at home and the people who are here. For the women who cannot give birth, the problem may be with the husband or with her, but God, we will send this evil away now. Father, thank you for Phineas's spear in our hands, for I demand now that this evil leave this life disappear go away and may the complete blessing come and also the healing of other diseases in the name of jesus amen